So I will be talking about the Julia interface to the Petsy library. Uh, at the outset, I want to thank all the contributors listed up there. Uh, without their contributions and support, this project wouldn't be half of what it is today. Okay, so first off, just what is Petsy? Uh, Petsy is a library that provides all the tools and utilities needed to solve the kinds of systems of equations that come up when you're solving partial differential equations numerically. And it does this on distributed memory systems and targets super, uh, supercomputers specifically. It has six main components. It has distributed memory vectors and matrices, primarily sparse matrices, so there's support for dense matrices as well. Um, it has mappings and orderings of various kinds, all the kind of bookkeeping stuff that makes it easy to assemble these very large systems. On top of those, it builds KSP, the Krylov solvers for solving linear systems. It has this, uh, the scalable nonlinear equation solvers, SNES, and there's a time-stepping interface as well. Uh, all of this is built on top of MPI. So MPI.jl is a dependency of petc.jl, because we need to interact with, pet, with uh, MPI communicators. So wrapping petc, it comes in two parts. The first one uses clang.jl to parse all the petc header files and just transliterate uh, you know, C statements into Julia statements. Very much a one-to-one -one mapping of you know, a type def becomes a type alias, a pointer to a double becomes a pointer to a float64. And you have to pass it all the right preprocessor flags so it finds all of the right code and none of the wrong code, because uh, Petsy uses lots of defines to include or not include things. So that's the first part. The second part is writing a high-level interface on top of the low-level interface. And the purpose of doing that is to connect up Julia abstractions to the Petsy abstractions. So things like abstract array and backslash, they have sort of equivalent representations in Petsy, so we want to connect this all and make a nice unified interface. An important characteristic of those abstractions is that they're generic. They apply to you know, vectors and matrices that have all kinds of different data types. PETC does support different data types, but not at the same time. There's a preprocessor flag when you, when you build PETC, you tell it what data type the elements of the vector are going to be, and so it builds the right version of PETC. But we want to preserve this generic nature of Julia, so how do we do it? We build PETC several times, one for each data type and link to all of them simultaneously and do some dispatch things to make sure that function calls end up in the right library. So the good news is this should be transparent to the user. So everything should just be routed correctly. So let's talk about the abstractions a bit. Uh, the first one, abstract array. So Petsy defines a vec and a mat type. And the high level wrappers make these as close to being abstract arrays as they can be. They support set index like a regular array. You can get information about the dimensions, and they even support a subset of blasts, sort of all of the alpha x plus beta y kind of stuff, um, but none of the factorizations and stuff. You don't want to factor a sparse matrix if you can avoid it. Um, and the abstraction is that an object refers to the global object, all of it on all processes. So indexing uses global indices. The dimensions that you get are the global dimensions. But these are distributed arrays too. So you need some additional functionality to expose the distributed nature of them. So there's also ways to get at the local dimensions and get other objects that represent just the local data that you can interact with directly. And those can be more efficient in some cases because you don't have any of the concerns of figuring out where the data is. You know it's local. The big way in which these differ from abstract arrays is the need to assemble. So indexing uses global indices. So it's perfectly valid for one process to insert a value onto a part of an array that lives on another process. Well, for efficiency reasons, you can't just send the data over immediately, wait for it to finish, return, do it again, do it again. It's far too slow. So instead, Petsy caches the value somewhere in memory. And then there's this assemble function, which has two parts. The first one starts sending all the data to all the other processes, and it uses non-blocking communications. So it can return right away. So your code can continue doing other things that don't need that data. Then there's an assemble the end function, which waits for all that stuff to finish, and then returns, and then the matrix is ready to use for like a Krylov solve or something. The idea behind this is you can overlap communication and computation, and that's really important for scalability. Uh, when you start profiling things, you find out communication is really expensive, so you can't afford to just wait. Uh, the high-level interface also contains an assemble function to just do all these all, all at once, which is useful for prototyping small examples. So the next part, uh, solving linear systems. Uh, Petsy has quite a variety of linear solvers, different Krylov methods, and preconditioners. And it makes it easy to mix and match them. And that's, this is one of the big draws of Petsy, is there's, lo there's a lot of functionality here. Uh, it also supports some other cool things like matrix-free methods. Uh, 
In terms of abstraction, what we do is we've extended the backslash operator. So you can call backslash on a Petsy matrix on a Petsy vector. And that will do a default solve with all the kind of default settings, which I think are like GM res and incomplete LU factorization as a preconditioner. So that provides a, a reasonable default. You can also explicitly create a KSP object, set all the settings, all the tolerances, turn all the knobs, and then call backslash on that. And then that will do a solve using all the settings you specified. So here's just a quick example I coded up last night. Uh, so what this does is it, it solves a small PDE in one dimension. So you can see it creates a matrix A, a vector B, uh, applies some boundary conditions, applies a stencil to the interior, assembles everything, and solves it. Uh, an important thing to note is the array, the PETC matrices are sparse matrices, so that, that um, NZ keyword argument for creating the matrix uh, tells it how many non-zeros to pre-allocate uh, for every row of the matrix. And so that's, although not required, you can have Petsy just dynamically allocate more memory as you go along. But that's important for performance. It needs to have some idea about the structure of the matrix. So as it stands, this is a serial example. So the, the big thing about Petsy is distributed memory. So let's think, what do you have to do to, to parallelize this? You have to do four things, pretty much. You have to provide a little bit more information to the matrix constructor. You have to tell about the um, the pre-allocation scheme for the non-diagonal block of the matrix. So the, the entry is that other processes are likely to populate. You have to tell the pre-allocation there. You have to add some conditional statements around the boundary conditions, so only one process sets the boundary conditions. And then you have to update the range of the for loop so it only loops over the local rows. Each process populates its little piece of the matrix, and then when you're done, the entire matrix is populated. But once you do that, then you have a very scalable uh, solver for a 1D PDE. But the idea behind this is you can sort of prototype easily, and then if you put a little bit of thought into the, how you structure your code, it's possible to extend it in, uh, to parallel in an efficient way. OK. So I said before, it's easy to mix and match different Krelov solvers, different preconditioners. The options database is what makes that possible. So Petsy contains this database of all of the options for all of its components. And I mean like every option, from very high level things like what Krelov method do you use, down to setting parameters, little settings for all the different algorithms. They're all contained within this options database. So like the example code here sets some options in the float64 version of Petsy. Uh, the first line tells it to use flexible GM res rather than the default of GM res. The second line tells it to use modified Gram-Schmidt to do some orthogonalization inside FGM res. And it sets the preconditioner to be an ILU uh, with three levels of fill. And so this is the recommended way to go about setting options in Petsy, both in C and through the Julia interface. Because this is what makes it so easy to mix and match things, just to change in a couple of lines here, and you can try different combinations of things. You know, there is an API to do all of this. It's, it's large, it's extensive. Client did wrap it all, so it's present if you want to use it. But this is the flexible way of doing it. Okay. The final point I want to make is about composability. Uh, Petsy is remarkable in how composable it is. So let's say you want to do a linear solve. What do you need to do? You need to supply a linear operator, the matrix. You need to supply some options about what iterative method to use for the solve. And you need to supply some information about what preconditioner to use. And that's very much reflected in the structure of the code. To actually create a KSP object, those are precisely the things you have to supply. So we have this very nice situation of you know, the code mirroring sort of the algorithm and the algorithm mirroring the code. And the same idea applies to the nonlinear solvers. If you want to solve a nonlinear problem, you need a way to solve a linearization of the problem and a way to update the matrix at the new linearization point. And the idea behind all of this is that users work primarily with the Petsy array types. The users have to assemble the system. But from that point on, Petsy fully encapsulates all the algorithms to operate on these data structures and to do so in an efficient parallel manner. That's, that's the power of Petsy. All right, that pretty much wraps up for everyone to talk about Petsy. As always, there's more work to do. Uh, the next big thing for the wrappers is uh, SNES, the nonlinear equation solvers. Those need to be wrapped in the high-level interface. There's also a handful more vector abstractions I want to implement. There's four or five different ways of looking at a vector, and they're useful for doing different kinds of assembly operations. So I want to support all of those. I want to make it easier to construct matrices in certain ways. 
There's also some additional kinds of indexing that don't exist in Julia because Julia doesn't have certain kinds of arrays. So for example, a block matrix indexing is something I definitely want to support that doesn't exist in Julia. And I want to do something about Windows um, because building Petsy on Windows is different entirely than building it on a Unix derivative. So I want to do something about maybe binaries of Petsy. I'm not quite sure what form that's going to take, but something should be done there. All right, uh, code on GitHub. If this is an area you're interested in, I encourage you to check it out and play with it. All right, questions? compared what uh, Petsy does in terms of performance with uh, the native efforts in Julia right now? Uh, not yet. Um, yeah, setting up some benchmarks I think is interesting. I know there's some work going on to compare the, um, I didn't talk about it, but there's also an interface to the time stepping components. I know there's some plans to compare that to ODE.jl, and we should do something similar for the Krelov solvers. Uh, row, uh, they're row major, um, although you don't need to expose that directly to the interface. Um, they're also zero based, and that's the annoying part. Zero, zero row major. Yeah, that's yeah, so. Uh, dim arrays, the dim might help you or... Yeah, actually, the, yeah, the new zero based arrays could be helpful because currently we have to manually convert all of the arguments. Yeah, yes, we should definitely look into that with 0 0.5. All right, I think I have to wrap up now. Thank <laughs> you.